Good morning, boys and girls. Today, we are going to be learning how you measure matter. As you know, we have already discussed what the states of matter are and how matter can change from one state to another. Now, we need to know how we're gonna measure all these different types of matter. Today's learning objective is, I will identify how to use tools to measure, test, and record the physical properties of matter. So notice the bullet, the bullet point words, the ones that are bigger, identify tools and physical properties. So those are really important words to recognize while we are doing our lesson. What do you measure? That's the big question. What do we measure when we are dealing with matter? Why don't we go ahead and find out? So the things that we measure are length, mass, volume, magnetism, and temperature. What? That is a lot, especially for matter. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about each one and talk about the tools that are used for each one as well. First, we're gonna talk about length. Length measures the distance from one end to another. So most of you have already are already familiar with using a ruler. So there are rulers and meter sticks and so on that can help measure the distance from like one end of the room to another or measuring how long a car is, a bus, a school, a chair, how tall you are, all that. So here are some tools that you would use. You can use metric rulers, meter sticks, and using those tools, you have to understand that we need to also label and label them with the metric units as you see before you. So when you are using a meter, a meter stick, uh, that is a meter stick is used when you're kind of measuring like a very large desk. Centimeter you would use to measure the width of a marker. A millimeter is something you would measure like the side of a coin, really small. And then a kilometer, you would measure how far the car is from your house. So those are just a couple of examples. So these are the tools you would use for length. Oh my goodness, I made an oops. As you can see, length is misspelled. So um, as you know, we all make mistakes. So hopefully uh, there won't be any more mistakes throughout this presentation. Next is mass. Mass is the amount of matter. So the amount of matter that you have. So to make it a little bit easier, mass equals weight. How much does your water bottle weigh? How much do, how much do you weigh as a person? See, mass measures how much weight. The tool that we will be using in class is called a balance pan, where you put a certain amount of objects on one side and then a certain amount of object, objects on the other side to identify which one weighs less and which one weighs more. And the metric units that you would use would be grams and kilograms. So those are a couple of examples that will help you. Temperature. So temperature measures hot or cold matter. And the tool that, as you see before you, is very um, straightforward, which is a thermometer. And as you know, a thermometer has two sides because in some countries, some countries use Celsius and other countries use Fahrenheit. When it comes to science, science usually focuses on Celsius. So you'll be seeing that um, that word more often than Fahrenheit. Okay, volume. Volume is the amount of space that objects take up. So, as you probably know, let's take a look at your bedroom. Your bedroom has a bunch of stuff in it, right? So, what takes up more space? Would your bed take up more space? Or would your, you know, your one toy on the floor take up more space? Probably your bed. So your bed has taking up 
the largest space in the volume of your room. So that's just a really quick example because then I'm going to show you the tools that you would use for that, the volume tools. So in class and in other classes that you will have in the future, you guys will be using graduated cylinders. Some are gonna be looking skinny like this or they're kind of a little bit thicker. Those are called beakers. So this is a great tool to use when you are measuring density and understanding like the water level um, of the chemicals that you are dealing with. So with tool, with these volume tools, the metric units that you would use would be liters and milliliters. Huh. So it's really important to recognize that each uh, tool and each measurement that you are using has a specific label attached to them. So that is why I have also included the metric units. And if for any reason that you are still confused about what I have been telling you, please make sure that you rewatch this video because it is available to you to watch over and over again so you can understand the concept. And then the last thing that we can do to measure matter is its magnetism. So magnetism is a force that pulls or attracts metal objects containing iron. So if you were to look at the picture that is right in front of you, that big black brick, that's an entire magnet. And all the teeny tiny little black particles, those are all um, objects that are attracted to magnets. And magnets are attracted to a specific type of material, especially matter. Does anyone know what that material might be? It would be iron. Magnetism is attracted to iron. So it is really important for you guys to recognize that. So these are all the examples of how you measure matter. So you have magnetism, you have volume, temperature, mass, length, all those. All those examples that I have provided for you is what is going to help you recognize and identify how you measure matter. Those are all the things that you need to look for, and those are all the tools that you can use to find out the exact measurements of all of them. So this concludes our PowerPoint presentation for today. Please continue on Schoology to fulfill your assignments, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.